Hello, I'm Dr. Rick Durst. I teach theology at Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary. Uh, this is part two uh, in a series on knowing and doing God's will. Uh, the first part is about three dimensions of God's will, God's sovereign will, God's moral will, God's individual will. And now I want to talk about walking wisely in God's will and making good decisions. And this is uh, arranged around uh, the word counsel. Uh, I've adapted this from a book by Gary Friesen called Decision Making in the Will of God and amplified it a little bit from Bruce Waltke's uh, great book on uh, knowing the will of God. Uh, there are seven dimensions of walking wisely. I have them in an order so I can spell the word counsel, uh, but all seven are critically important and not necessarily in any particular order. And this is a, a way of living a disciplined life. Uh, the first is to check the scriptures. If you're going to walk wisely in the Christian way, look to see what God's word says. So check the scripture. Uh, the second is look for open doors. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's very hard to walk through a closed door. And the scripture wants us to use wisdom. God opens doors. God uh, closes doors. Sometimes we say if God closes a door, he opens a window. Uh, the, the third is to use common sense. Uh, you remember in Acts chapter 6 when uh, God was, uh, the early apostles were be given uh, qualifications for those that would serve the tables in the early church. It said, look for spirit-filled people who have common sense. Now, I know common sense isn't all that common. It's the practical wisdom of knowing uh, how to get things done and how many things can be done within a certain time frame. So use common sense. Um, the fourth dimension is never demand an angel. Every word's important here. Never demand an angel. Now, if God were to send you an angel, determine first off if it is from God. Uh, 1 John chapter 4 says, test the spirits to see if they're of the Lord. Uh, but if it is of the Lord, listen to that angel. However, some people will not make a decision in many cases unless they have an angel. I think that's really tempting the Lord and trying to remove yourselves from being responsible for your own decision making. Uh, the fifth characteristic is to sense the spirit. It is very possible uh, to make a decision where you have a deep peace on the inside, even though on the outside you're still afraid because you're going to new territory or going to a new task that you've never done before. But if you will sense the spirit within and peace, that's very important because God puts that peace beyond understanding deep inside. Um, the sixth characteristic is to examine your own desires. Uh, Psalm 37 says that God gives you the desires of your heart. Now, many uh, Christians are a little uncomfortable with that. Uh, but I remember in one case where I was praying about walking in God's wisdom, I said, which hill do you want me to climb? And I sensed from the Lord, he said, which hill do you want to climb? He was telling me to look at my own desires. Uh, the final one is to listen to your elders. Now, I don't think it says in Scripture to obey your elders, but it does say to give them a good listen. What's an elder? Uh, those are the people that are in your life who have more life experience than you and have accumulated wisdom and to run your ideas by them and to listen to them as you're seeking. Uh, wisdom is very helpful. Now, you're not asking them to take responsibility for your decision. You must be responsible for your own decisions using this model. But using this model... Uh, Maybe not so um, uh, systematically in that sense, but as you make this a part of your life, you'll see increasingly that you're walking in wisdom and others will come and ask you to be a person who speaks into their life as well. I hope this makes sense to you. Watch that other video if you haven't seen it yet on the three dimensions of God's will. Thanks for listening.